It's New Brew Thursday! Woo! Woo! We're uh, filming on location here in uh, Barley and Hops in Temecula, the old world family tavern. Uh, it's a little dark, as you can tell, because we're in a tavern. We're in a tavern. Um, and we're drinking, what is it? The Pliny Elder? Pliny, Pliny the Elder. Elder. Pliny the Elder. This is, uh, we're, we're with the owner here. This is uh, Scott, and uh, he owns this, this, this fine establishment, which um, I think is great. I, the first thing that stuck out of my mind when we came in here was that this is all very new development. Um, even when I looked down on the Google satellite maps, it was like just being built. And yet you walk in here and you're instantly kind of transferred to a different place. And it's, yeah, it's, it's very, fantastic. It's very homey, very uh, tavernish. Well, it is a tavern. I guess it's tavernish. Yeah. But it's, uh, it works. It's really, really nice here. That was the idea. Um, you know, we, we basically built this place from hand. It's all, uh, all the woodworking and everything. Uh, designed it ourselves, finished it ourselves. Uh, the concept is kind of a, an old world family tavern from Northwestern Europe, something you might find in Belgium or England or Germany. So we do a little bit of, uh, of each of those countries justice, hopefully. We have yeah. uh, about 250 beers, mostly from Germany. Belgium, England, and then West Coast uh, America craft beer scene. And you have an you have an impressive tap list as well. It's, yeah. yeah. You guys are you still at twenty or have you? We just expanded? added fifteen more. Added fifteen thirty five. Thirty five taps. We're getting ready to add six more and two casks. What's the slogan? I like it a lot. Uh, it started out eighteen beers on tap, none of them crap. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> but we still refuse to put any domestic beers on tap. That's awesome. Oh, That's I awesome. Like it. So you know, it's probably why you guys stuck get out. A, you can get a Bud Light anywhere, but you got to come to a, a, a great establishment to get good craft beer. So. Yeah. yeah. And that's why we're here. We're trying to focus on doing some good craft beer bars in the area. Um, you know, t I think another good part of this is that you're in Temecula, so you're kind of ostensibly what is known as wine country. Yep. And so it's you know you're kind of fighting that little stereotype. Little so do you, do you find that you well, are converting some it. wine drinkers? Or? Yeah, there are you know, some. Um, we have like Lindemann's Raspberry Framboise on tap. Okay. That's a nice conversion beer for oh, wine absolutely. drinkers. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So, and like we said, we're drinking Russian Rivers Plant of the Elder. Um, this is a personal favorite of mine as far as IPAs go. Um, Pliny the Elder is named after a Roman naturalist named Pliny who is uh, attributed to naming the actual hot flower and giving it the Latin name for wolf in the shrub or something like that. Something like that. Yeah, wolf so of the shrub. wolf of the shrub because of its bitterness and its harshness. It was kind of like a little... And its bite. Its bite. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, And we're going to be pairing that today with uh, some staple items that you can get here at uh, Barley and Hops. One is their bangers and blankets uh, blanket bangers blanket, blanket bangers. bangers and this this looks I, I'm looking at this thinking like I want to just devour this right now <laughs> yeah. like, I want to push Brad out of the way and just dive into this and then we're also doing a pulled chicken uh, spicy sandwich and they were kind enough to split that sandwich into four for us um, so you what you would get off the menu is a little bit bigger but um, so we're we're very excited. I think the to try one off the stuff. menu is this whole thing in one sandwich. <laughs> exactly. So exactly. it's a, it's just a little bit bigger. So <laughs> this is my first time having this beer too. I never I've never even heard of it. And so like most most shows for me are new brews. He's had a lot of them, and right. I think I'm the only one on the show who really gets to explore the new side of the beers. <laughs> so uh, well, what do you think of this one? Uh, so far from what I've had, it's awesome. It's it's got a really floral scent to it. Um, it. It strikes me as something that's really going to kick my, kick me in the face, you know? But then when you drink it, it's got the bitterness and it's really backed up by the malt, you know? It's very well balanced. Um, very yeah, balanced, yeah. It's very good. It's considered this, the, best, uh, the best IPA, certainly the best double IPA in yeah, the world. This is a, this was um, a 2004 uh, bronze medal for GABF and then a 2005 gold medal for GABF and then a 2006 gold medal for the World Beer Cup. Wow. So wow. they've they've certainly earned their reputation of being a really Now that great I know IPA. that, it tastes a little better. <laughs> <laughs> so, but this one, I think uh, over a lot of the IPAs that I've had, this one really does have the aroma that just kind of brings you to the beer. Yeah, I was you, say, had a, you had an interesting yeah. story about Vinny the Brewer for that. Yeah, Vinny Salerzo was born and raised here in Temecula. His parents started Salerzo's Winery and Vinny started home brewing on, on their property. And uh, he opened a brewery when he was about, uh, I want to say, 19, 20 years old, called the Blind Pig Brewing Company here in Temecula. Now, there was a little bit of fallout there, and he ended up at Corbell, um, brewing for Corbell, started a brewing company called Russian River, and then ended up uh, kind of buying himself out, I guess, and moving to Santa Rosa, where he has the Russian River Brewing Company. 
and he's recently, about a year and a half ago, opened up a, uh, a full brewery about a mile away, and he makes pretty much nothing but blind pig, a damnation, and a pliny the elder. Yeah. And I, that, a few of the other ones that I really, they do a sour, I think, called Consecration. And another one. Which, uh, yeah, and I uh, love that temptation. beer. Yeah, and Temptation. <laughs> yep. And so they have, Russian River has is one of those breweries that has like these hidden beers that you don't really know very much about, but then when you find them, they, they become instant favorites. So, sours are phenomenal. Cool. Yeah, yeah, sours are something that I've just recently gotten into. I, I tried my first one probably a couple weeks ago. And it blew my mind. I've never had a sour beer. Mm -hmm. and it was just like, whoa. Yeah, you wouldn't get that from the name. And I think if you if you've never tried a sour, the first time you're gonna hate it. That's just that's kind of my rule of yeah, thumb. I don't people think I've tried like, one. when you drink it the first time, you're gonna absolutely hate it. Start drinking some IPAs after that. Start drinking some other stuff, and then come back to it. And I guarantee you'll 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 fall in love with them. So. But let's dig into this yeah. food because I, I can't right. I can't really hold off on this. This is a spicy chicken. Spicy chicken. Um, yeah. Pulled, right. Spicy pulled chicken. So I, I think it's going to be excellent. I'm going to dig into one of these right yeah. here. And uh, help yourself, Scott, to this wonderful yeah. food that you're... Here. The Chef Eric. <laughs> chef Eric was yeah. kind enough to help us out with the food. And Props I've been again. running around like a madman. It's just... Uh, you know, it's hard. It's hard to eat until you mellow out a little uh, bit. Yeah, so, I'm into that. Still, you know, no, blind pig. Mm -hmm. That's a, a beer that um, that Vinny brews now. That was his original beer at the Blind Pig Brewing Company. That was his original recipe, mm, and that wow. was kind of discovered by accident. He was home brewing, and he accidentally put 50% too much malt into, uh, I, I believe it was a pale ale, and so he said, just you know, basically for shits and giggles, um, decided to put 100%. Uh, too much hops in it, and he came up with Blind Pig. Uh, you know, basically it's a it's a borderline double IPA. You know, kind of a single IPA. But at the time, all there was was British style IPAs that right. were very mild. Oh, you yeah. know, four or five percent beers. Yeah. And, and here he had this. Uh, you know, what what is now kind of considered the West Coast IPA. And wow. from that, um, now we have Imperial IPAs, right. uh, you have the, Dogfish's 120-minute yeah. IPA, and right. people are doing them all over the world now. Right. I, the, hoppy, the hoppy craze, while starting in the, the West Coast, and while we're known for that out here, has really moved across. Even, even in the international side of things, you're seeing like the Belgian, the, the strong dark Belgian IPAs that are getting created, the, the stuff that's going on even in Europe right now, they're really starting to like represent the hops. and. Scotland right. has one called Brew Dog. Right. Yeah. Monster Brew Dog is awesome. too. Yeah. And we just we actually just got a couple of bottles of their Tactical Nuclear Penguin, oh. which is the the oh, highest ABV. Thirty. Thirty-two. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy. So like, and I, 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 I saw the picture on Twitter that you posted. and I'm like, does that say thirty-two <laughs> percent? <laughs> Supposedly they freeze it and then refreeze right. it, yeah. refreeze it, and then refreeze so it. So it's basically like an ice box taken to the next level. Yeah, and then and again. Yeah. Like, like ten times or something crazy. Oh yeah, and yeah. they and they're known for like pushing the envelope and being insane and being crazy and and I think after like a lot of people, for a year, right, or something. Yeah, like they age it for like a year and a half, and they, then they so age, I, and then they freeze it. Right, from what I'm told. So wow. and I I, that, I, wow. I like BrewDog, and not to go off on a tangent, but I like BrewDog because they they kind of epitomize to me what the craft brew industry is. It's, it's taking taking it to the envelope, taking risks, taking chances, experimentation, just. Yeah. Whatever happens, happens, and sometimes you'll get really great beer, and sometimes you'll just get absolute swell, you know. Right. And, and that's that's what the exploration's about. So yeah, Dogfish awesome. is kind of on that tip, yeah. also, you know, with all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, he's, he's very innovative. Sam. Yeah, Sam Sam does some yeah. really interesting beers. We did Dogfish Head Pangea last week, and that's that's a great holiday beer and just meaty and so. But this is I like this stuff, and it th your food here. I'm sorry, but it's it's awesome. Yeah, let me this, try it. <laughs> it's it's incredible. That one, Steve took a bite out of. I got a bite out of that oh. one. Just grab that one there. <laughs> well, then, we've definitely uh, Steve's flag. <laughs> <laughs> My flag. That goes really well. That goes really really well with the beer. Yeah, I was. Have you tried this? Try that because nope. it's the the bangers have got like a nice spice kick that like really helps with us. Yeah. Really. yeah. We got a little stone ground mustard there. Oh. Yeah, I got to dip that in. I totally missed the your... mustard. <laughs> yes, you did, sir. Deal with it. So we, mm. oh, um, yeah. as we mentioned, Eric is the chef here. Yep. And he was kind enough to help us with the pairings and to create some amazing food for us. And okay, now I gotta try it with. He's, the, uh, he's putting on an amazing beer dinner a uh, week from tonight. Right on. Um, it's a, it's an English style uh, beer dinner with all Christmas ales. Mm, like okay. a, a Beatus Christmas Ale and uh, Anchor's Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and I think we have Uden Carolus's Noel as well. 
We try to do a, a beer event every third Saturday of the month. Every third okay. Saturday. For instance, right in January, we're doing a, a Belgian-style strong ale festival. Oh, oh awesome. Wow. It's one of four that we do uh, okay. uh, during the course of the year. When, 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 was, it, when was that again? Uh, every third Saturday. The third Saturday yeah. of January. So that'll be January yep. the 20... Uh, well, uh, that's it'll, it, it will, the date will appear right here. <laughs> I believe it's the 16th. Um, yeah. what, are you, what, what kind of beers will you be featuring at that? Uh, you know, we'll have like you know Stones Cali Belgique. Mm -hmm. um, awesome beer. We'll have uh, we'll probably have you know Chimay White, uh, Saint Bernardus, uh, Delirium Tremens. Oh, right on. Chimay uh, White is good. We should totally Parade, do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you'll see the three of us here like yeah. roaming around. <laughs> Sans <laughs> so, cameras. Those are those are those are great beers. I'm, yeah. I, you know, Chimay is one of the Belgian beers that kind of got me into Belgium. Like, and that's and I think everybody has their Chimay moment. Right. You know, and and so I've um, never had my Chimay moment. Well, you're not a big Belgian fan, though, either. Yeah, you don't drink a lot of Belgian beers. I still am waiting to have my Chimay moment. Have we'll you, have that. Have you had Chimay? Yes. No, I've never had it. We still, need, we still need to have the three-liter bottle party. That's what I'm waiting for, the yeah. three-liter bottle party of Chimay. So. so, but yeah, that's that's one of the things that I really like about the Belgian beers is that you can get, um, they really go all out with their, you get the goblets with the name and, the, and it's specific every, glasses. Every Belgian and, beer has its own. Right. Um, not every Belgian beer, but every Belgian brewery right. has its own specific glass. Yeah. And if you go to a good Belgian bar, uh, bar and they don't have the glass, they won't serve you the beer until the glass is right. available. Yep. Wow. Yep. Wow. And I've been to a few, and I'm, I'm personally, I'm a cool. glassware freak, so I, I collect glassware. So I have like a huge collection of Belgian glassware. I'm getting into the craft beer glassware right now, getting a couple of, like, a, all of my favorite breweries glassware. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all Very about nice. it. And what, nothing angers me more than when I go to like Yard House or something like that and I order a, a Belgian beer and they serve it to me in a wine glass. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like, no, 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 you need to take this back and get it in the right glass. Like, no, or don't serve it. Because I'm, I'm very much about that. That's, you know. Do you have any uh, Delirium uh, Noel glasses? I don't. A little pink elephant in the I Santa don't. I, I've been looking for those, yeah. I have a couple I can give you. Oh, oh right on. Wow. See? This is, <laughs> Scott's awesome. And I'm going to give him a big, huge hug after the show. And we won't put that on camera because he'll be he'll look have this really awkward look on his face. <laughs> I feel like I'm uh, splitting you guys up. I feel, like, I feel a little bad. So I'm looking at these tables, and um, I'm going to do a cutaway to the table, but um, it's basically this barrel that has all these uh, beer coasters on it from different breweries or whatever, and it looks like there's just a bunch of lacquer dumped on it. And it's, you, you, we, we were talking about yeah, it. Yeah, I, lo I love these tables. This is a great so idea for the bar. Awesome. Yeah. And like, where do you get these made? Exactly. You know, they were purchased. The, the wine barrels are ex wine barrels okay. from a local winery that I purchased. Really? Which is a nice little like. Oh, mm, now it's at a craft beer bar. What? <laughs> <laughs> you know, then I actually have to um, let them dry out, um, take the stays and, and hammer them down a little bit, and then I have to secure them. So because, you make these because, yourself? Yeah, then I roll them, and mark them, cut them, you know, then, then uh, sand them, stain them, wow. top them, and then I pour this two-part epoxy product on top of them. Wow. Yeah, I this stuff looks so, it looks so thick. It's like it's like a 3D coaster underneath. Right. Yeah. It looks fake, but and it's I'm, I'm it's, putting my beer so this on is an I know, thing, I keep right? I keep moving it around to each coaster. That's the German one there. <laughs> so they each have their own thing. This has got like Irish coasters, Irish flag. That's got the German oh, beer. Oh, I didn't even notice that. That's German cool. theme. Yeah. Oh, and this is all one and an Belgian. English one. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's nice. cool. Yeah, and I, that's one of the things I like about this place. You look around, it's like you got the German beer steins, but then cool. you kind of got the English feel with the pub, and you got some Irish thing going on, and some Belgian stuff. I Dublin. love this place. Yeah, yeah. it's as if you have to come here and check it out for yourself. You do, <laughs> yes, come here. Earlier, I think you said also, Scott, that you made the bar top also? Yeah, wow. and the tables too. Yeah. And the wainscoat wow. and all the decorations. The wainscoat, you know, wow. See, and I think that really, like, That's passion. again, that epitomizes, yeah, exactly the passion that goes into somebody who's into good beer and good food and wants to set up a place. Because it's very easy to go out and say, like, oh, I want a bar top that looks like this and I want this. And, but, like, making this stuff yourself. Bar, you know? Yeah, right. exactly. It gets, it gets kind of kitschy and, like, it gives eh, you whatever. An appreciation for the place, too. Yeah, they exactly. put some time and effort and thought. And exactly. you can make it more unique, it. you know. Just, right. You know, like if you go next door to the other side, mm -hmm. I have like a Belgian area, uh, a, 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 um, 
a California section, I have a okay. German section, and an English section, you know. So I'm trying to. That's cool. Like, sometimes I, 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 okay, I'm out of uh, tackards and signs, you know, <laughs> no posters. So I'll just take a magazine from England, you know, cut up all these posters, make a collage out of it, stick it on a piece of plywood, and cover that's it with awesome. this stuff. Yeah, right. that's awesome. Mm -hmm. so that, 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 that kind of reminds me of just craft brew in general. <laughs> right. Like, so you're just doing yeah. what you got to do to just make it like work. Just like being inventive and unique, and not that's just all being like. That's started. It's yeah. Just the experiment. Right. right. So that's, that's very cool, and I, like I said, when I walked in here the first time, I just thought like, wow, this is so not what I expected. Yeah. You know, you see it from the outside, and you expect an ultra-modern interior that's going to be like, you know, kind of a contemporary craft beer bar, and you're like, you walk in, and you're like, oh, wow. Well, it's, just... it's contemporary and like old world at the same time. Yeah, it's, it, so it really hits a we, really good balance. We tried to make it so it looked like it was the turn of the century, you know, with the candles, right. you know, no fluorescence. Just everything that you might which, see. Which created Except some TVs, lighting issues, but you know, right, it's yeah. good. <laughs> well, actually, <laughs> contemplating not having any TVs, but uh, you, you kind of I, I, have to. Yeah, right? yeah. It's, you get people that want that, but yeah. I, I can see that. You walk into a place that's like, look, no, this is an English bar, deal with it. I mean, you go into O'Brien's, you know, I'm sure you're familiar with O'Brien's. Mm -hmm. They don't have any TVs. Yeah. Stone doesn't have any TVs. Right. True. Because you, know? you know what? When you're here and you're with your friends, that's you're here to be with your friends and talk to them and a TV's and a, it can be a distraction. The TV's not really prominent though. It's you're kind right. of tucked away yeah. in the corner. Well, yeah. we're, we're actually filming. The TV's right here. Well, you can see the TV. Can you see it in there? The okay, yeah. so, and yet no one, even though we're filming here, no one is looking in this direction. So, yeah. like, obviously the TV is not that big an issue. Or so. we're not that big of an issue. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. We really appreciate you, you yeah. letting us come out here and take up some space and, and you know, yeah. introduce you're Introduce welcome. our, our audience that. to your I awesome place the here. Exposure, thank you guys so yeah. much. Thank no you very much. Like a, a fun, uh, you know, project that you've got going on. Here. Oh yeah, we have a blast. Oh yeah, so. it's fun. You just sit and drink beer and talk about it. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. <laughs> so yeah. as always, stay safe and drink beer. Drink beer. All right. So here's to that. Cheers. Cheers.